As Donald Trump gets ready for more meetings this afternoon at his Mar-a-Lago property, the latest twist in an election that's been full of them is unfolding around the country. A push to try and convince members of the Electoral College to, in effect, reverse the election. Moves that would be unprecedented and, frankly, unlikely to work. Today, the last, last ditch attempt to try to reverse the election of Donald Trump. Protests planned to persuade electors around the country not to cast votes for the president elect as 538 electoral college members meet in all 50 states. 37 would need to flip to stop Trump temporarily as he tweets, quote, if my many supporters acted and threatened people like those who lost the election are doing, they would be scorned and called terrible names. It's a Hail Mary, even with star-studded support from one famous fictional president. Our founding fathers built the Electoral College to safeguard the American people from the dangers of a demagogue. Some electors pointing to U.S. intelligence agencies' assessments that Russia interfered in the U.S. election as reason enough for electors to defect. What I want is the information to be out there so that the American public and electors know who has been involved and make sure that we protect the integrity of the American democracy. Electors will not be briefed on Russia's involvement, despite a push by the man whose email was hacked, Hillary Clinton's former campaign chairman, John Podesta. The electors have a right to know what the answers are if, if the if the U.S. government has those answers before the election. To Donald Trump's aides, it's something else. The entire nonsense about the electors trying to use the Russian hacking issue to change the election results is really unfortunate. I think that actually undermines our democracy more than any other conversation that we're having right now. The incoming chief of staff flatly denying any interaction between the Russians and Team Trump. Even this question is insane. I mean, of course we didn't interf interface with the Russians. I mean, this whole thing is a spin job. Trump now at his Mar-a-Lago property for the holidays, but not before a final stop on his thank you tour in Alabama, where the president-elect, so who four easier. years ago called the Electoral College a disaster for a democracy, praised the, the process. The electoral vote, and I, I never appreciated it until now, how genius it was, what they had in mind. It's genius. I'm telling you, it's genius. I but Trump, silent so far on this weekend's edition of Saturday Night Live, spoofing today's electoral effort. Kate McKinnon reprising her role as Hillary Clinton, Alec Baldwin reprising his as Donald Trump. That we in Russia are so happy that you are U.S. president. Oh, thank you. We think you are the best candidate. Sure. The smartest candidate. No doubt. The Manchurian candidate. I don't know what that means, but it sounds tremendous. Through it all, some electors are facing tremendous pressure to try and change their vote. One member in Wisconsin told the Associated Press he's received some 50,000 emails from people about his role uh, in today's Electoral College vote. Still, a new poll just out this morning shows that more people believe that electors should vote for the candidate who won the state, 46 percent, as opposed to the 34 percent who believe electors should not be bound to vote for the winning candidate. Matt Hoda. Hallie, how does it actually go down today? How does the voting actually take place? Okay, so when you break it down, Matt, 538 electors are heading to usually the state capitals in the state where they live all across the country to go ahead and cast their votes. 29 states do have laws that require electors to vote for whomever won their state, but there's nothing in the Constitution that explicitly requires that they do so. One elector in Texas, for example, has publicly said he will break with his state and instead uh, not cast his vote for Donald Trump. But historically, that kind of break is really rare. Since 1948, it's only happened with nine people. So you can tell how sort of unprecedented that would be. Uh, ultimately, on January 6th, it's the vice president who presides over Congress to count the votes and then announce the results. And let's game it out, right? Let's say that enough electors do flip to prevent Donald Trump from getting to 270. What happens then? Well, then the election goes to the House of Representatives, which, as you know, is majority Republican, meaning there's virtually no chance Donald Trump does not end up in the White House. All right, well explained. Hallie Jackson, thank you very much. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.